So I'm selling my 11,000 square foot mansion and the buyer is Pace Morby and he's here with me right now. And we're gonna do a video and talk all about kind of how we put this deal together because of course it's gotta be creative financing. Has to be. Has to be. So we're gonna break down how we're putting this deal together and why and hopefully you can learn from this video and do the same thing on your deals. All that and more coming up. Go to 8weekacademy.com to claim your free copy of Jerry Norton's most popular training. In it, he reveals his blueprint for making $100,000 per year with real estate. If you're new here, I'm Jerry Norton. I went from dead broke to millionaire flipping houses. And after doing a thousand deals, I created this channel to help you master the art of wholesaling and flipping so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. Okay, Pace, so this is kind of fun because uh, I made this big change in my life, you know all about it, where I'm actually moving my business and my family to Puerto Rico. Now, if you don't know why, there's some really, really amazing tax incentives. It's the only tax haven for US citizens that you can actually do. Um, so I'm moving there really soon. And when I was talking with Pace about my move, um, he's like, Jerry, I'll buy your house. Yes. <laughs> And so I said, all right, let's talk about this. So we've been able to kind of put a deal together. Uh, fortunately, you're in the same industry I am. You have a need that this house fits really well. Yes. We'll talk a little bit about it. And we're able to put this deal together. No real estate agents, no commissions. But because it's such a big deal, um, there's, some, there's some benefits to me depending on how we structure it. And there's some huge benefits to you as well depending on how we structure that. So I think the biggest thing, honestly, for at least from my standpoint, is that people ask me two questions. One, how can I buy my own house on creative finance? It's a weird mental block where people don't understand it's possible to buy a house, seller finance or creative finance or sub two or lease option and actually live in it, mm -hmm. right? Where I, I see in my comments or on, let's say a Facebook ad or something, people go, man, I would use creative finance if I could live in the house myself. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's crazy. So that's a big part. You can live in your dream home. And every, ever since I came to this house, I was like, the guest house, the this, the space for the this and that, yeah. which we'll get into in a little bit. I'm like, this is a dream home for somebody in our industry. And then the second thing that people ask me is, is it possible to do creative finance with high-end luxury? And I say that it's actually not just possible. It's done all the time. All the time, yeah. Because you have sellers, I think, that are a little more savvy, maybe. Right. Or they've been in real estate, they've done deals, and they're a lot more open, maybe, right. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting is I'll talk to somebody on a sub two at like $150,000 purchase price, and I go, yeah, I can buy your house with creative terms. They go, what? Yeah, they can't get their head around it. But a seller at a million or whatever goes, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. we'll just create a note, and I'll do the da 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 And you're like, <laughs> Wow, yeah, that was, that was easy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we're doing that on this deal. Now, what's kind of crazy here is I just bought this house a year ago. Yeah. From when we, when, when we close, it'll be a little over a year from when I bought the house. Yeah. Now, everyone knows, right, the real estate market's blown up. And so Pace was like, Jerry, you know, name your number. And, um, you know, I threw out a number that I think is actually where this house would sell if I tried to list it you know, on the MLS and find a buyer because right. the market's blown up here and, you know, I see comps now. There weren't comps before. Yeah, there's houses all over the, uh, like yeah. on the other, outside of your neighborhood that are selling like pretty crazy numbers. Yeah, hitting yeah. the price per square foot. And so, but if I were to do that, it creates a lot of problems for me. Yeah, number one, it creates, you, know, you can talk about the tax stuff, but number one, if you sold this house for the purchase price, you're going to pay a big amount of money in commissions. Commissions. Right, then you're going to have appraisals then you're gonna have inspections, mm -hmm. right? Then I have to go to a lender and that lender is gonna want all sorts of things, making sure that, well, they don't wanna lend on a property at too high of a purchase price, mm -hmm. so whatever. Yeah. And then I have to go through months and months of getting finance on a jumbo loan. Yep. It creates or it alleviates a lot of those headaches right out of the gate. So you as the seller with no agents involved, even if you represented yourself, you still have to have buyer a side. buyer side. Yeah. Right, a buyer side on this makes so much stinking money. So, mm -hmm. you actually net way more money in your pocket. Way honestly. more, yeah. and that's not even counting our structure we've created. Right, it happens super fast. For here's the thing that I that I would share with people: if you can run your business, if you're in real estate and you do what Pace and I do, deals, transactions, and you can run your business virtually, meaning you're in your home office, you're doing it somewhere else, 
you can do it virtually from Puerto Rico and not pay tax. Which is interesting because the main reason you're moving to Puerto Rico is for the way the world has gone very, very virtual and you can automate a lot of your business. Mm -hmm. It's also the same reason why I wanted this house. Yeah. Because the, the world has gone so virtual that instead of me needing the three offices that I have, I'm consolidating yeah. and I'm saying, how do I do more of my stuff in my house? Yeah. And it made it so the house that I'm currently in, which is a good size home, just is not enough space. I need more studio space. I need more meeting rooms. I need places to run a mastermind. And it's like, I need, and actually the way you and I originally started talking about, hey, why don't you sell your house to me? Is there's a home in your neighborhood that's for sale. I'm driving around looking at houses and I tagged you on Instagram. I go, Jerry, I might be your neighbor. <laughs> Yeah. Right, because I'm looking for a place that either has a guest house or some big, massive warehouse in the backyard so I can run parts of my projects, right? Yeah, and this, so that's what this house is. I mean, when I bought this house, it was right when COVID hit. But like this this office right here, it's got another office, a lot. It's, I mean, guys, 11,000 square feet. So the guest house is like 2,000 square feet. So I wanted this house for the very same reason. I wanted to run my events out of here. I wanted to have space where... I could do stuff. I could do my videos. Your I could studios, have someone come yeah, in. I got help. I got helpers that come, and it's that kind of space. So it's amazing. I don't have offices like offices, right? There and I no do. Offices. And I do. And that last year, this is funny because I've been following in your footsteps for mm -hmm. quite a while. You were on Steve Trang's podcast a, a, a while ago, and you talked about how you took your family on an RV trip, mm -hmm. and you go, "It forced me to get out of my business." Yeah. So what happened is I go. Um, I see that podcast, COVID hits, yeah. and I go, I don't need to be at my office. And I go buy an Airstream and we travel for four months. I remember, it was cool. And I go, why do I have all these offices? I'm, I'm, I wanna get rid of them. And then slowly, I just built out a studio in my own house and I go, man, I can hang out with my kids, four minutes later be on camera, mm -hmm. I'm now creating a lifestyle that is conducive with what I, what I, what I want. And then boom, it was so big, so much more live streaming, so much more conversation, you know, conversations, less meetups, less face to face. And I said, I'm just going to work from home. It's the, it's the best way to go. Yeah. And this is like one big massive office. If you create it that way. Yeah. Yes. Now I have a gazillion kids, so we use right. it like a house, but you're going to use it and it's going to be really great that way. Right. So there's that need for it. But the tricky part here is, you know, guys, at some point you, you, you have to transition from focusing on making money and then making space in your life for tax management. Right. You just have to Yeah. make space for that. Now I talk about this on some of my videos, but there's kind of two routes. You can start acquiring assets. You get the depreciation right off. Mm -hmm. You get enough assets that qualify and enough depreciation. You can take your very high income and wipe out your tax liability, which is what I do, which is what you do. Yeah. I know the downside to that is you show no income, so you have to, and you're buying a lot of properties, which then require a ton of management, management. and other things, yeah. which is now the opposite of lifestyle, right? If you're not careful. And that's been my worry pace. My worry has always been, if I have to make space in my life for managing long-term assets, is that going to be a distraction from what I really enjoy doing and want to do, which is flipping, right? So I've strategically not done it and just paid the tax. Right. So Puerto Rico comes along and it's like the ultimate, for me, it's the ultimate solution because it allows me to stay out of rentals and stay out of all these asset managed, assets that I have to manage. Now, there's a place for it. I, I get it. If you're into that, fine. I hate it. Well, even, even going back to creative finance. So for me, check this out. I don't do a lot of seller finance. So I'll buy a house on seller finance, but I won't sell a house on seller finance because now I have cash flow on a property I get zero depreciation on. Because right. I'm no longer the owner. Yeah. I've now sold it as a lender and I've got all this cash flow coming in. It doesn't benefit me. So people go, man, Pace, why aren't you doing more wraps? Why aren't you doing more seller finance? I go, because it, it is hurts great, it, but it hurts me. And I have, need the depreciation. You have to understand the way depreciation works is it's, is it's not forgiveness, it's deferment. Right. So the minute you sell that asset a year later, two years later, you recapture all that depreciation right off. Yeah, so you, either you, have can't. To you either have to 1031 it into another yes. property, but you're, what you're essentially doing is you're kicking the can down the road. Right. You're going to deal with it at some point unless you hold that property essentially for forever, right? Yeah. yeah. So Pace is managing his tax liability, which would be very high if you reported the income you make, mm -hmm. and you're offsetting that with depreciating assets. So I've just strategically now made the decision that Puerto Rico is gonna be my way to manage my taxes. But I guess the thing, you're listening guys, you're listening, and I, you, gotta, you gotta ask yourself two questions. 
as my income goes up, I'm gonna also go up in the tax bracket. Right. That's the way we're set up in America. The more you make, not the more you pay, the higher percentage you pay. Right. And they don't care about you the richer you get. Mm-hmm. You're, you're the easiest person to vote to raise taxes for because you're the, you're the 1% or right. whatever, you, you, whatever bracket you're in. So it's going to continue happening. I think right now, Pace, what we're gonna see is in the next year, the Biden administration's gonna take it from that combined 50% yeah. to 60%. Easy. He's already saying the things he's saying, if you add it up, it's 60%. Yeah. So you, the challenge there is you go make a dollar, you pay 60 to the government, you have 40. Then you go buy something, you're paying 9%. Like you're just getting taxed, you're bled to death, right? So essentially your buying power is only about 30% of what you you earn at that tax bracket. So the Puerto Rico route is one of the smartest things you can ever do. I I think so. Especially when you have 10 kids and you buy a property on the ocean with three acres <laughs> and, and you can go and enjoy that life. You know, it's still a little scary because we're leaving friends, we're leaving family, we're leaving community, we're leaving everything we're, we're used to and comfortable to. But we are. We're going into a really nice resort community where it's safe. We're on the ocean. Um, so we'll have to make new friends. We're going to figure out a lot of unknowns. But but you've been doing that your whole life. Right. That's my, my thing is every three to five years, I completely change it up. We move a lot of times out of state. Right. We've only been in Arizona three years and here we are. Yeah, it's know, funny. So schedule. I'll go to masterminds, right? And they'll say, hey, you're buddies with Jerry Norton, right? And I go, yeah. And they go, yeah, he used to live in my neighborhood. And I go, oh, you live in Mesa? And they go, no, no, I live in Alpine, Utah. Yeah. Or I live in St. <laughs> George. Or I live in whatever. I'm like, Jerry has made the rounds, right? Yeah. You've, you've gone and created friends everywhere you go. I create, it, it creates a ton of growth because it forces you out of your comfort zone. And it also teaches your kids like change is good, uh-huh. right? And go Don't and make new friends, right? And you're gonna go into a new spot. They're gonna be way less afraid to go create new friends yeah. than they would if they were always in the same house in the same neighborhood. Yeah, that's right. So let's talk about how we structured this deal because this is like creative financing slash creative business, right? Because right? we're combining a little bit of the two. Uh, so let's talk numbers. Yeah, why not? So I got into this deal for 1.7 and at the time I was fearful it wouldn't even appraise. Mm-hmm. That's how much the market shifted, right? Cause not, not because it's not a nice house, it's not worth it, it's comps. Because in this, a, a, an 11,000 square foot in Mesa does not have a lot of comps to support right. that size sale price, right? So. So one seven is what I bought it for. Here a year later, you were and you bought it when? What month? April. April. Oh, so you haven't even been a year. Got it. April okay. Right now, or one year right now. Love. It. Okay, so you've had you it know. for twelve months. You bought it for one seven. Yeah, which means, guys, if I sell it, however I sell it, whatever my gain is, I'm going to be subject to capital gains tax. Right. Not Puerto Rico because it happened here. Right. So I can't. Because you can't. You're, you're, the three things you were talking about haven't happened yet, right? They haven't so, happened yet. Right. Yeah, and even if they did happen, they would, go they would want to carve it back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so either way, on this house, because it hasn't been two years, I would be subject to short-term capital gains, not even long-term, which means I'm at the high tax bracket. Right. So I'd be paying, if, 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 I, if I sell it to you for three million, you pay me cash, and I bought it for one seven, I'm gonna owe 50%, 37 <laughs> federal, 10 Arizona, right. on the one three gain. Right. Makes absolutely no sense. No. Like, why would I do that? Right. Right? It's not about what you make, it's about what you keep. Right. So what we did is we said, let's let's restructure this. Is there a way to do this to where it's beneficial for you, it's beneficial for me, it's on the up and up. Right. If they want to audit us, go ahead and audit us, right? We did it right. So we're gonna do a two million dollar sale price. Right. So You're you will putting, have you will have some tax burden on that two million. Yeah, three hundred. Right. So you'll have a gain of three million, which or three hundred thousand, which makes sense. And it works well because you're giving me three hundred. Right. So you're giving me three hundred. There you so go. So I'm gonna show it coming in anyway. I'm we're gonna show that I bought it for one seven, sold it for two, so mm-hmm. three hundred thousand. So I am gonna pay I'm gonna be paying on the three hundred. Right. But okay, I pay what is that gonna be? What's what's well one fifty. Right. Call you're gonna pay, it. I'm pay 150, yeah. which I'm okay with that. Yeah. Now what we're doing on the on the difference is you and I are in the same industry, we mastermind together, we right. network together. Um, you've actually offered to pay me money to help you with email Mul- marketing multiple and times. other things. In fact, I haven't a- asked you, I've begged you. I've begged you, I've begged you, I've begged you. So I beg. I'm, I'm, I'm years behind Jerry's growth. And so, um, you know, I'll go pay 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand to go learn one thing from one person. And so one of the guys that I've been really wanting to learn from is you. And so when this came up, there was a major opportunity to say, 
why don't we turn this into a consulting transaction mm -hmm. so that strategically um, it actually becomes a tax write-off for me. Mm -hmm. So the house actually becomes a tax write-off and the way that we securitize the agreement. So essentially what the agreement is, is that I'm going to pay you a million dollars mm -hmm. over a, a five-year period. Yep. And that five-year period, I pay you a million bucks. The way it's securitized and it's guaranteed is a lien against the property, yeah. right? So that you get a million dollars and I get a phone call or a Zoom every week or whatever we work out. Mm -hmm. We're still working on those details. And then that way, if it gets audited, they can verify, dude, yeah, this is in this industry, you so pay 25 result? grand for a one day thing. Which isn't unheard of. It's yeah. not only not unheard of, I just did it last week yeah. in, in um, Tampa. Right. I'll pay, and last year I paid somebody 25 grand for one day with them to learn yeah. about taxes. Yeah. And I've done that too. Right. Yeah. So if you think about it, guys, if, if Pace starts making a $25,000 a month payment um, to Jerry Puerto Rico entity, mm -hmm. Pace's entity now is creating a write-off for $25,000. Mm -hmm. i am now showing income in Puerto Rico taxed at 4%. Right. So you save- Over a five-year period. You save half a million dollars. You yeah. get to keep a half a million dollars, yeah. which is massive. And you get to write off a million dollars. Right. That you would have, because you would have had to show that as after-tax income. 100%. I'd have to go make money, pay taxes on it, or use depreciation against that money to keep it, then take that money, give it to you, and I get no additional tax benefit. Because it's your personal residence. And Yeah. In this case, I can go make 25 grand. I can pay it directly to you, and it's a full write-off against yeah. that 25 grand. I don't have to go buy a property to depreciate that 25 grand. You can use that for your other assets right. and your other income. 100%. Yeah. Genius. It's so, so smart. <laughs> so the good, the good thing is that Jerry calls me up. I'm in Los Angeles last week and he says, hey, I've got an attorney. It's going to draft this all up. This is great. So we're still working out the agreement. But I was like, this is so genius. And plus I get Jerry to consult with me and now he has no way to wiggle out of it. I've been, beg <laughs> I've been begging him for years to he's be doing this. He's going to be like, let's pull out our note. Remember our note? Yeah, we have a, we hey, have Jerry. <laughs> yeah, 100%. This is here. Yeah. So I love the way the structure is. So just to go over the numbers again is that um, you're selling the house to me for $2 million. Mm -hmm. What we're adding on top of that is a consulting fee of a million guaranteed over five years. And it's securitized against the property to, to guarantee that you're not going to lose out. And if I stop paying the consulting fee or I stop doing anything, then you can take the house back. Yeah. Right. And the other thing we've added to the whole, the whole deal, which I think is pretty cool is my note on the house is one, two on a 30 year fixed at like 3% or 3.1. Right. It's a great interest rate for that size loan. Right. Um, so what, what you're going to do is you're going to continue paying down the equity. That'll just be equity pay down. Now it won't be taxable at all because we've got the right. purchase price in my, my, we got, what I bought it for, what we sold it for, so that's what's taxable. Mm -hmm. So then you'll continue that down and then assume that 1.2 loan. And what did we do, like a five year, no, 10 year total. Yeah, so we did a, a one point, so essentially the purchase price of the home is two million. We are, Pace is taking over the $1.2 million yes. loan sub two. So I'm not assuming anything, I'm just taking it over sub two. I'm gonna to continue to make those payments. I think it's like $5,500, mm -hmm. right? So $5,500 and then I guarantee Jerry that I'll either refinance him out or I'll pay off the, the 1.2 or I'll sell the house and get my buyer to pay it off. Um, but you know- In a 10 year window. In a 10 year window, right? And um, then the other portion of the equity, that will all get paid out um, kind of the same way. I'll just keep paying $25,000 mm -hmm. a month towards yeah. that, right? So it's down. Yeah. So I don't, I look at the house and this is too big of a house for me. Yeah. Okay. This is too big of a house for me. I have two children. And it's 11,000 feet. It's 11,000 <laughs> feet. It's a big house. Right. I remember <laughs> I lived in an 11,000 square foot house when I was a teenager, but my kid, my parents had 12 kids. Yeah. Jerry has 10 kids now. So it makes sense to have a home this way. We use it. Yeah. Right. You guys are like everywhere. For me, I'm going to use the property primarily to consolidate and get rid of two of my offices have my masterminds here at the property, and on top of it, be able to expand my studio and do more of the stuff that I'm, I'm finding a lot more passion in. So mm -hmm. I don't have the room in my house. I've got a, a great home, yeah. but I, I'm, I find myself in my studio, my daughter's banging on the doors and mm -hmm. doing, I have zero ability to grow a business inside of there. Here, I can, my business can flourish. This becomes a money-making house for me. So some people would look at this and go, man, you bought the house for $2 million, then you guaranteed Jerry a $1 million in consulting fees? Dude, that's a lot of money. I look at it, I go, this is opportunity for me. 
This is a place for me to actually make way more money than it cost me to be here. And you're smart too, Pace. I mean, this house has a lot of room. It's yes. an amazing house. I mean, it could be four, five, six in I think, time. I think by the time I exit the house, let's say 10 years, it's a six to seven six, million dollar. Six, seven million, yeah. I mean, this house, 20 minutes that way in PV is, is six right now. Right now. And, and that's all pushing this way. Right. So it'll be there, yeah. Yeah, and then you know about uh, DR Horton just bought $275 million in land out in yeah. Apache Junction. So this, it's just growing. Everybody in the country wants to live here. And I'm kind of in the center of everything. This is so conducive to somebody that runs a business like yours and a business like mine, where people come in for live trainings. It has so much space as a guest home that's bigger than most people's homes. Mm -hmm. And so now you can have people for your mastermind and you've been doing that, right? Mm -hmm. We've been doing that. That's why we bought it. In fact, what kind of, so I'm a very analytical guy. And so when I looked at this house, purchasing it, I ran all the numbers like you're doing and I said, if I consolidate this, if I do my events here, that's all cost I pay right now. The house is free. It pays for the house. That's how I feel right Not now. Not entirely, but it at least pays for the upgrade. Right. From whatever you, whatever I was at, where I was at upgrading to this house, it easily more than paid for the upgrade. The good thing too is that the house I'm moving out of is just three miles away. And that house I'm turning into an Airbnb and my net income on that thing will basically pay the air conditioning bill here. <laughs> There are, <laughs> there are nine air conditioners in this house. But, so what are you gonna do with the book, the books? I'm so keeping the books. I'm gonna yeah. leave them, if you'll, if you'll take them. I, real quick story here, I bought this entire, I mean, they're on this wall, this wall, encyclopedia sets from like 1900s. Mm -hmm. They're really cool, they're antique, between 1900 and like 1920, and there's complete sets. So I bought it at an estate sale in Scottsdale for like what was it, two or three hundred dollars mm. for the whole thing? And this isn't even all of them. My wife I mean, has a bunch. You got twenty thousand in books here. It's I, I had it appraised at ten thousand. Yeah. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. But they look cool. They fit in here. It gives it kind of that, you know, it makes you feel smarter because you're like, I feel like a lawyer sort 100%. of. I'm when people come in here, they're intimidated. Like, and then people say, "Have you read all those?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course, every Twice. one of them." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing your content in here, bro. Anytime you want to come and stay in the guest house, you're welcome. You should, you should be careful saying that because we'll show up with 10 kids <laughs> you and you'll sure? be like, what the heck happened? That'd be great. <laughs> All right, guys, so really fun deal here. But like Pace said, we, the reason why we decided to talk about this was, um, for one, I think it's really fun to share my experience, your experience, let people kind of see a little yeah, bit and inside and our see, life. Show them the story of where you're going and the, the, like your journey, right? If you guys yeah. go back to Jerry's old, old YouTube videos, It'll be you with your shirt off. When I was ripped. When he was shredded, bro. He was like Ninja Turtle and Shredder, dude. He was shredded. But bald. Yeah, how'd you get all that hair? For $9.97, I'll share with you the I love secret. It. So there's that, and then you were traveling with your family, and that's essentially part of the journey, is that yeah. you're educating people and, and letting them know by example that you've got to craft your dream life. Yeah. Right, and that's what you're doing. And so you had to share this part of the journey of like, hey, we're selling this because of this, we're moving here because of this. Yeah. And still do what I do here, but instead of, instead of looking out at the pool, I'm looking out at the ocean. Right. It's the only thing that's gonna change as far as the business. Yeah, and your lot, and no your lot size probably quadrupled, right? Yeah, yeah, because it's a three acre lot and this isn't. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be a fun journey. But also Pace is uh, just helping people see that there's no limit to how you can structure deals and no price point. It's whatever creative ideas you can come up with sit down, pencil it out, and put it on paper, and you can do it. Love it. Really good. All right, guys, thanks for joining us on this video. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe. This is the number one channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping, and we'll see you on the next video. And I have one thing to disclose, though. Yeah. So over here, see the bookcase, how it goes up right there? Mm -hmm. uh, in that corner right there, a bird got in here. See if you can point over there, Tyler. Is there a dead bird? It fell down, all the way down to the bottom, and I could hear it down there in the bottom. And I didn't do anything. So there's a dead bird. It's a carcass is at the bottom of the, <laughs> inside the inside the cabinet, inside the that, trim. I'm have a carpenter coming. You shouldn't have told me that. I, I just want to disclose everything. You're not going to back out now, are you? I might. <laughs> <laughs>